humanity is going to rise to the challenge of tackling this. It's going to be amazing to see. Uh, welcome back to Rachel's News. I'm really excited to have you here today. We'll be talking a little bit more about shark water extinction, and I have two shark experts here with me today, uh, Julie Anderson and Reggie Domingo, and we'll be talking more about shark conservation, shark preservation, and how we can all be a part of the solution to save our sharks. Uh, so, Reggie, you are the founder of the Nakawa Project and yourself, you are involved with uh, the Fin Free movement. You've both been integral in protecting sharks and making sure that we have sharks for generations to come. Did you always know that you wanted to be involved in ocean preservation? You know, funny thing, uh, Rob Stewart um, tells stories about how he was fascinated with sharks from the beginning, and that was not my story at all. I was terrified of sharks, you know. I used to play Jaws in the pool. <laughs> I had, definitely did not want to meet a shark. And I love the water, became a diver, and just, you know, wanted to dive with everything. Turtles, whales, dolphins, not sharks. And then after about five years, I was in the water by myself, diving. Um, everyone else had gone up, and I just wanted to stay in the water as long as I could. And I felt this presence next to me, and I looked, and much closer than Reggie is to me, there was a hammerhead shark. Bigger than me, eye to eye, beautiful. She was amazing. And the first thing I thought is, oh, I'm dead. This is it. I'm gone. And I nearly inhaled my regulator. And then in that moment, everything shifted. And that shark's eyes, I saw life, not death. And I just became absolutely intoxicated mm -hmm. by sharks. Came up to the surface. I was like, did that just happen? And at that point, I think the sharks figured out a way to get me working for them. And it's never been the same since. That's incredible. And it's interesting how that shaped you know, your entire life path continuing from there. And how about yourself? Were you always interested in ocean conservation? Um, I mean, I was not always interested in on ocean conservation. I was al always interested in, in animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was like super lucky of having parents that took me to the mountains. My father is a musher, so he raised with sled dog races. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had this connection with the ocean sailing and free diving and diving. and. But only when I've seen the, the first film of Rob was when I really wanted to do something with sharks and the ocean and conservation. You know, it, it, something changed on me, something wake up. And then I started to, you know, understand where things were happening. And then uh, one day I was like, I'm going to go there. And I moved from Spain to Costa Rica mm -hmm. to make it happen. And since then, since 2012, I didn't stop. So thanks in part of Rob and also different experiences I had in Costa Rica and other countries, now it's my journey, it's part of my life, and I cannot just see myself doing something else. Yeah, it's incredible. And I think it's safe to say that Rob is one of the most inspiring people that we've ever met. Um, I met Rob a few years back, and we spoke together at Planet and Focus. And just his integrity, his drive to make a difference in the world, inspires and motivates everyone he meets. Um, what about him inspired you specifically, and what was sort of that defining moment that said, I need to stand up for sharks, I need to do something now. Well, on the film, on the first film, um, there's these moments where I, I could see him underwater, not only enjoying to be with a predator, but you know, in between them, mm -hmm. that I was like, I want to be like this guy. I want to meet sharks, I want to understand the oceans better, I want to do something for them. And it was the moment when I've seen the footage of him in the water, that motivates me more because the bat and the, you know, the research and all of this, it always motivates me somehow, like the photojournalism and, you know, understanding stuff and, but being in the water with sharks, I mean, I haven't done it in the Mediterranean before. And it, that moves me. I, I wanted to learn these animals. I wanted to meet them. I wanted to be part of this ecosystem in a way that I could share with others the same story and then you know, maybe inspire others to, to take care of them and to, you know, go out there and meet them. Very cool on yourself. For me, you know, I knew that I wanted to do something for sharks, but I was an advertising executive. I owned an agency. I was in New York, and I thought, like, what am I going to do, right? And you kind of think, well, you know, I there's nothing I can do. I can't contribute, or you just kind of get into that moment. And then I went and screened a movie 12 years ago called Sharkwater, and it hadn't come out in the U.S., 
I met this amazing, just eager, <coughs> incredible guy, right? Afterwards, the director, I never, ever, ever would have stayed behind and talked to anyone, but it was Rob. And his movie motivated me so much. And here he was, just this incredible, you know, this mm -hmm. presence. And, you know, you meet Rob and you just realize, like, here's a guy who believes he can change the world. And you know that he can. And you just want to be a part of that. So within four days, four days, I was up in Toronto. I was in New York at the time, in Toronto, meeting with him with an, a notebook full of notes about how we were going to save sharks. Wow. And that was 12 years ago, and dozens of countries later, three nonprofits, um, two different movies. It's incredible. It's been an amazing adventure. And, you know, I think Rob has this incredible quote that means so much, and probably you know it too, which is, you know, you take your passion, you take what you're talented at, you smash them together, and you end up leading, living a life of purpose, and you also find incredible people too. And I think that was what is so special about Rob too. I mean, within the moments that I met him, the next week, I sold my house, my business, my car. I changed my life completely to save sharks. Yeah. And that's not unique. I mean, Reggie has the same story. Bra, who was on the movie, has the same story. You know, and I'm sure Rob had a huge impact on you, too. And there's so many other stories like that. And that's the incredible power. Yeah. It's Rob. And, I mean, he changed a generation of people who then became activists. It was so much more than about him. It, it became an entire generation that wanted to take action. And, I mean, we're talking about sharks. People often have so many preconceived notions about sharks and they're predators, they're scary. What do you think is the biggest misconception around sharks? There's so many different ones. I think, you know, the fact that, that people say, well, they're these mindless killers, right? They're just eating machines. You know, it's crazy because when you spend time in the water with sharks, you realize that they have different personalities, that they have cognitive abilities, that they have social structures. There's scientific studies that prove that sharks are more intelligent than dolphins. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions is, is, you know, you dip a toe in the ocean and here's these mindless predators coming to get you. Right. And you know what? If they wanted to eat us, Reggie and I wouldn't be here right now. Very true. Yeah. The diet is important to learn. Like. The people just think sharks eat everything and sharks are just in the same group. There's more than 500 species of sharks eating different stuff, living in different ecosystems and with different shapes and different, you know, behaviors. So I think that the people should, before judging them, learn them as a species a little bit more. Like it's like talking about birds, right? Like you can just put all of them in a bird world. It's different species and of course they don't target humans as food of course then there can be like you know approaches that are sort of accidents but they never mean it they are perfectly like uh ready to understand what's their food and what's not they are selective hunters they don't see us and say oh i'm gonna eat this human today mm -hmm. they don't and it's important to understand that and i also think a lot of people don't understand why sharks are so important in our ecosystem and our environment. Can you explain a little bit more for the audience why sharks are so important? Absolutely. So, you know, I think the other big misconception is, is, you know, you tell people 150 million sharks are killed a year and it kind of gives them pause and they say, wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And then they say, so what? Why should I care? The only good shark is a dead shark, right? And that is such a misconception. We absolutely need sharks on our planet. They've been on this planet 450 million years, right? Survived five major extinctions and they formed our oceans. And I think what people don't think about is the fact that oceans give us more air, oxygen, than rainforests, all the rainforests on the world combined. They're our best natural defense against CO2. They remove 40% of the world's carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and they control our weather and our climate. Yeah. So when we're messing with that, and we're messing with the balance of that, we're messing with our life support system, and that is very important. Yeah, yeah they, they clean um, our oceans, you know, they eat the sick and disease and they balance everything not only sharks but also orcas like top predators so people need to understand that this is a you know a perfect puzzle like the earth with each species lions gorillas sharks so we are part of this planet and we cannot see ourselves as the top predator because we are not there's other species that are that don't target us as food and that we really need them to survive, to live in this planet and, and to keep on, you know, understanding how beautiful it is to learn those species and be able to understand, okay, this is not sustainable anymore, what we can do to change it today. So other families and communities and countries will, will understand that and we together we will find the, the solution to address this, you know, industry or trade to 
a point where we are gonna not only save species like sharks but save ecosystems. Yeah, and a lot of change has been made in the past few years, especially since the original film, Sharkwater. And that was the, one of the first documentaries that I ever watched. Uh, I'm 19, so I'm awesome. still pretty young. And I remember just being absolutely shocked by the horrors that were happening um, in our oceans and, and to these beautiful creatures. Um, and since then, more and more countries have started banning shark finning. Uh, there's been incredible outcomes. What do you hope that the outcomes of this new film, Sharkwater Extinction, will be? What actions do you hope to be taken from it? So, Sharkwater for sure made huge change, right? Mm -hmm. 30 countries banned shark finning, an additional 20 banned shark fishing. Um, 150 million people live in a place where shark fin is an illegal substance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 12 million square miles have been dedicated in the ocean to shark sanctuaries. Wow. One movie. That's just amazing. Yeah. With shark water extinction, what we're hoping for is, is we're going to make that movement even bigger. Shark water handled shark finning, which is responsible for about 80 to 100 million sharks being killed a year. But another 50 to 70 million sharks are being killed. And what shark water extinction is about is basically uncovering the mystery of where are those sharks going, where are they ending up, and how all of us, including us in this room, have either consumed sharks, are using shark products, and don't even realize it. Yeah. I hope that with this film, a lot of corporations will stop selling shark meat, because there's a lot of them everywhere, and even faking their names. So I think that with this film, we can approach them in a beautiful way, you know, with a powerful tool that they can even share with their you know, consumers in their supermarkets and say, I am a shark free supermarket or I'm a shark free boutique or whatever, mm -hmm. because this is the way to go. And also, if there's some of them that don't want or cannot stop selling shark meat, at least don't sell an endangered species and name it with its name. It has a name and a surname. And that's a, like a metaphor uh, that I want to use because they, they are different species, not all of them are in the same status uh, conservation wise. So I just hope it's gonna go, go big and, and move big corporations because they are the ones also like providing to people. And it's good that corporations also evolve and change and educate their consumers, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, as a corporation or big corporations, you need to give something extra, not only good products, but trust, you know? So we want to know what we eat. We want the people to ask when they go to the seafood section, what's that? It's cathone or it's flake. Where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. What's the species? It's sustainable? It's not? Should I eat it? I need it to survive? So I just hope that with Sharkwood Extinction, this movement will come. And I'm sure that with this, we will, win a little, uh, we will win a little bit of time to think about more creative ideas about how to protect them. Very interesting. And there's a key point there is do your research and make sure you're taking action. Ask questions because at the end of the day, it's us as consumers that make a difference. Our choices determine what happens in our world. Uh, so every little decision adds up and makes a difference. And I think that was a huge part of Rob's philosophy mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when I heard the news uh, that he was missing and that he had passed away. And I was absolutely devastated uh, because he had been a hero of mine for so long. And, uh, you know, you guys were close with him. But how did you feel when that happened? What was that like for you? I think um, it was a very, very devastating devastating experience and it continues to be. I yeah. mean, we have been focusing so much on getting this movie out there and getting this mission moving forward that I don't think we've even had time to really process the we're fact so that he's focused. gone, right? Yeah. I mean, we've focused so hard on it and we're starting to realize now, I mean, if you would have asked me a couple of years ago, you know, would we be sitting here in Rob's spot? Absolutely not. Not in my worst nightmare would Rob not be with us right now. And it's just been, it's been incredibly hard for all of us. And fortunately, he's brought us all together and we feel him very strongly and feel his legacy moving us forward and moving you forward and driving all of us together. Because of course, you're going to be part of Team Sharkwater. Um, but it's just, it's absolutely the most horrible thing. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's super sad. And I mean, I was not expecting something like this happening in my lifetime, you know, like losing a friend, a hero, a teacher, and somebody you just wanted to have more years to share with and, and learn from and 
and then bang, in five minutes it's not gone but in another form. Mm -hmm. But again, as Julie said, uh, I think that Rob was super smart and was super energetic enough to put a lot of different characters together that maybe he saw something on them yeah. and creating this community, you know, this un unity or, or, you know, humans together with something super special and I just feel him in many things. I see in Julie a part of him, in Brock, in their parents, of course, in, in friends with it. I see parts and, and like parts of the soul of Rob everywhere and also in animals, I feel him. I know it's, it's impossible that he just disappeared. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. That was one of the more, more powerful soul, souls I ever met. Yeah. So he's around. It's very sad that we cannot communicate the same way maybe, but it's even challenging, you know, that we need to understand that we are part of everything and that we are here who knows for how long. We need, of course, to take care of us take care of our life, take care of our ecosystems and species and resources and enjoy and love because you never know what's going to be the last time you see somebody. And I think he, he I mean, at least he teach me a lesson. And now I try to be as much, I mean, I, I talk a lot, but now I even talk more. I try to tell everybody everything that I think, That's just good. with no taboos, you know? I just want to be myself because Maybe I would never see this, this person again in, in this, you know, formation, in this language or in this earth, no? Mm -hmm. So I think he was a teacher and he's st still teaching us a lot of lessons and that's beautiful. So even if it's sad, I think we need to take it positive, learn about it uh, and make an impact with all of this. And he's impacted millions of people and uh, inspired youth from around the world and continues to do so. He's an icon and I really think he redefined activism uh, in such a special way through documentary and through storytelling. And um, his passing was so sudden and he left such a, really a legacy, but he left so much film um, and hours of footage uh, and the film wasn't complete yet. And you guys were sort of tasked with finishing this project. What was that like stepping in and trying to finish this process that wasn't finished yet? Um, and you know, what was it like trying to complete his vision? I mean, there was no other choice, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. we absolutely, all of us are compelled to make sure that his vision was carried forward. Mm -hmm. But Rob took copious notes. I mean, yeah. he narrates the entire film. Right. We knew exactly what he wanted to achieve. And he's also directing us too. And every way, in little ways every day, we know that Rob is kind of making sure that everything happens. You know, I think it was probably one of the hardest things we've ever done and we're still kind of reconciling that. Mm -hmm. But it's something so necessary. Yeah, I mean, we, we needed to do it, you know, yeah. even if it's hard and I, I still remember when um, Sandy and Brian were emailing me like, Reggie, there's audio missing that you will need to repeat and I was like, whoa, whoa, one moment, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. But then after something came in, like, of course I'm ready, I need to do it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry and maybe it's gonna hurt me, but man, I mean, if we don't do it, who will? Yeah. So, of course. And uh, I mean, what gave you that strength? You said it was uh, part of Rob's legacy. You felt like you needed to do it, but was it Rob? You think that was pushing you to to make that change happen? Of course, yeah. Yeah. I figured day. Yeah. every day. And honestly, I mean, I, I can't even imagine that these words would come out of my mouth. But literally, he communicates with us and makes sure mm -hmm. that his message is heard, and we do what he needs us to do. And if we don't. He'll remove the <laughs> obstacles and make sure that we do. And I think that was the power of Rob, and it's still the power of Rob, and it always will be the power of Rob. And, you know, he left us volumes of footage, and this is just the beginning. Yeah. There is so much work left to be done, and it's not about us, the, the two of us sitting here, or even the three of us sitting here. There's so many people out there that can make a difference and make an impact. And you're right, that's what Rob's message to the world was, yeah. and that's what Rob's legacy is, and we all are responsible for carrying that out. Okay, so final question. Um, how can we all get involved as consumers, as citizens? Um, our responsibility goes past just the choices that we make. What can we do to be more involved with continuing Rob's legacy and being a part of this change? Okay, here's a nice one and a beautiful one and a cool one. Go out there, explore, 
feel the animals, feel sharks, go swimming. If you are not a diver, you can even meet sharks. So there's many, many ecotourism platforms all over the world. Choose the best one or choose the one that you can afford or the closer one and then go underwater. Meet these creatures and more creatures, not only sharks, mantas, sea turtles, uh, sea lions, mammals, everything. Connect with them and then you will feel something and it will become part of your journey to talk about them and then you will talk with others and that will start conversations beautiful ones with creative ideas to protect them so i think ecotourism and to choose where your holidays or your money or your savings go it's with this type of things experiences that can move you and even move the people around you of course normal you know um habits that we have in a daily basis no but I think that the most important thing right now is to make conservation cool and we need the people to first meet these animals. This film is going to help, yeah. for yeah. sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, one of the goals of Rob for this film was to bring, you know, the sharks in front of the people in a quality that they will get like, oh my goodness, that's the yeah. most beautiful animal I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But after watching the film, go out there and experience yourself. Okay, you're right. And Rob did make conservation cool. I mean, and, and you're in a testament to that. Pardon me, you're in a testament to that too, right? I mean, Rob is just this awesome, you know, real life hero and everyone can do that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're sitting here saying we changed our lives completely and, and now we're in conservation, but you make daily decisions and you even mentioned it, right? You're voting with your dollars. Yeah. Every single time you buy a product, you need to know what's in it. And it's the responsibility of the consumer to educate themselves and make sure there's no shark liver oil in there, there's no squalene in your cosmetics, you're not eating shark meat. There's 18 names in English for shark. Really? I mean, yes, isn't that crazy? And a recent study just came out last week from Oceana, mm -hmm. almost 50% of seafood in Canada is mislabeled. So even when you think you're not ordering shark, you may be. And I think it's up to us to vote with our dollars and all our companies to do the right thing. Stop serving us endangered species and also label it correctly as well. So that's something someone can do on a day-to-day -day basis. Just make sure they're smart and they're educated consumers. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Everyone, this is uh, Shark Water Extinction. Please go watch it when it comes out. This film is going to create real change. And we're so lucky to have people like these working on this film, making sure that the message gets out there. This is our time to create change. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. I met my first shark when I was nine. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And the second it made eye contact with me, it freaked out. That whole experience removed all the fear I had. Fifteen years ago, I began a quest to save sharks from shark fin soup. We're killing up to 150 million sharks a year. How could this be happening? The word is out in the Costa Rican government now that we're making shark water too. Um, is shark finning still happening in Costa Rica? dollar industry. There's mafia rings trying to exploit the resource. So we gotta watch our back. We have to be careful. There is very bad players. Cars pulled up behind ours. It looks Costa Rican. Sharks are now renamed and fed to us. Pet food, livestock feed, and even in cosmetics. You know, we spent four years trying to figure out what the biggest environmental issues were, only to discover this in our own backyard. There's two Japanese geese. We gotta get up there and see. Are they shooting? Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go, go. go. 5.13 p.m. Watch standards at Sector Key West Command Center. Received a report of a missing diver. We depend on other species for survival. Removing sharks is removing part of the framework that allows life to exist on land. The only option I have is to not give up. We've developed a distrust of humanity at times. We're trying to figure out how we're gonna save ourselves. We still have a bright future if we want it. But we've gotta do something now. Humanity's gonna rise to the challenge of tackling this. It's gonna be amazing to see.